Hi, this is Dr. Rajeshwar from YR Pharma Tube. In the previous video, we discussed the historical background, nomenclature and chemistry of aminoglycosides. If you did not watch the video, hit the i button on top right of this video to watch it. For the other topics of antibiotics and medicinal chemistry, click on the links given in the description below this video. Also, answer the questions given in the community tab. In this video, we shall learn the classification, properties and clinical uses of aminoglycosides. The aminoglycosides each contain one or more amino sugars linked by glycosidic linkages to a basic six-membered carbon ring. The amino sugars present in the aminoglycosides may be glucosamine or neosamine and usually the basic group is either amino or guanidine group. They contain a 1,3-diamino inositol moiety consisting either of streptamine, 2-deoxystreptamine or spectinamine. Several of the alcoholic functions of the 1,3-diamino inositol are substituted through glycosidic linkages with characteristic amino sugars to form pseudo-oligosaccharides. In the word pseudo-oligosaccharides, pseudo means false, oligo means few and saccharide means sugar. Altogether, the word pseudo-oligosaccharide means the false sugar molecule consisting fewer sugars that is 2 to 9 monosaccharide sugar units. Classification of Aminoglycosides The aminoglycosides are among the oldest antibiotics. The first one, streptomycin, was discovered by Waxman in 1944. About hundreds of aminoglycosides are known but only a dozen are in clinical use worldwide. The majority have been obtained as fermentation products from the actinomycetes genus Streptomyces. The drugs included in this group are Streptomycin, Neomycin, Paramomycin, Kenamycin and Tobramycin. A smaller but equally important group are obtained from Micromonospora species. The Gentamycins and Cesomycins are in this category. A chemical method of categorizing the aminoglycosides is on the basis of the type of aminocyclitol substitution patterns. There are two aminocyclitols encountered. Number 1. Streptidine which is a diguanidine derivative of 1,3-diaminohexose or streptamine and number 2. 2-deoxystreptamine abbreviated 2-DOS. The streptidine derived group contains streptomycin obtained from streptomyces griseus and dihydrostreptomycin obtained from streptomyces humidus. The 2-deoxystreptamine derived drugs can be divided into two groups. One, where substitution exists on the two geminal hydroxyls that is at positions 4 and 5 and the other on the two non-adjacent hydroxyl groups placed at 4 and 6. The closely related neomycin obtained from streptomyces fradiae as a mixture of epimers neomycin B and neomycin C. It also exhibited a broad spectrum of antibacterial activity. The use of neomycin in a number of topical creams and lotions usually in combination with bacitracin and polymyxin. Paramomycin is a mixture of paramomycin 1 and paramomycin 2 is obtained from streptomyces rhymosus. It is active against clinically important Shigella, Salmonella and E. coli. It has been useful against dysentery and gastroenteritis caused by these organisms since no intestinal absorption occurs. The kenamycins are 4,6 disubstituted 2-deoxystreptamine derivatives obtained from Streptomyces kenamyceticus. It is available in two forms kenamycin A and kenamycin B. Kenamycin was first isolated in 1957. It is effective against both gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria as well as against mycobacteria. Its use has been superseded by tobramycin and gentamycin. Tobramycin is produced by Streptomyces tenebrarius. It is the C3 deoxy derivative of kenamycin B. It is active against many serious gram-negative bacteria, particularly Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Serratiae and Enterobacteria. Two Micromonospora species, Purpuriae and Echinospora, produce the Gentamycin C complex, a roughly equal mixture of three closely related antibiotics designated as Gentamycin C1, C1A and C2. Its broad spectrum is similar to that of other aminoglycosides 
of particular interest is its high activity against bacteria such as Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Enterobacter, Klebsiella, Serratiae, E. coli and Proteus. The drug is also synergistic with penicillins. Cesomycin is a gentamicin analog. It differs in having an unusual unsaturated amino sugar. It is obtained from Micromonospora invoyensis and is similar to gentamicin in pharmacology and spectrum of activity. It may not offer any overall advantage being inactivated by the same enzymes. The semi-synthetic C1-N-ethyl cesomycin homologue netilmycin. Netilmycin is resistant to these enzymes thus being a drug effective against some gram-negative resistant E. coli, Klebsiella and others. Of the 8 aminoglycosides that are currently used, 5 are synthesized from different versions of streptomyces. Streptomycin isolated from streptomyces griseus, neomycin isolated from streptomyces fradiae, paramomycin isolated from streptomyces rhymosus, kenamycin isolated from streptomyces kenamyceticus, and tobromycin isolated from streptomyces tenebrarius. Gentomycin is isolated from Micromonospora purpurea and it consists of a mixture of approximately equal amounts of three compounds gentamicins C1, C1A and C2. Amycacin and Netilmycin are synthetic drugs. Amycacin is a chemical modification of kenamycin. Netilmycin is a semi-synthetic derivative of schizomycin which is isolated from Micromonospora invoyensis. Based on the site of action, aminoglycosides are classified into systemic aminoglycosides and topical aminoglycosides. Systemic aminoglycosides are streptomycin, gentamicin, kenamycin, amycacin, cesomycin, tobramycin, and netilmycin. And topical aminoglycosides include neomycin and framycetin. The table mentioned here illustrates the two deoxystreptamine containing aminoglycosides which are divided into gentamicin group, kenamycin group, neomycin group and other aminoglycosides or aminocyclitols. The structures of clinically used aminoglycosides have been given at the appropriate places in this lesson also in the previous lesson. Properties of aminoglycosides Aminoglycosides are water soluble, stable in solution and more active at alkaline than at acid pH. Aminoglycosides are very basic compounds forming highly water soluble stable salts. They are usually marketed as sulfates. They exist as polycations in the pH of the small intestines and are not significantly absorbed from the gut and must therefore be administered parenterally. They penetrate cells and the blood brain barrier poorly. However, they do not penetrate bacterial membranes by a complex series of biochemical events. Selective toxicity may be partially due to these factors. Clinical uses of aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides are fast acting but they can also cause ear and kidney problems if the dose levels are not carefully controlled. They are effective in the treatment of infections caused by aerobic gram-negative bacteria including Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Indeed, they use it to be the only compounds effective against that organism. Some gram-negative bacteria are resistant to aminoglycosides due mainly to enzymes which catalyze reactions such as orthophosphorylations, orthoadenylations and N-acylations. Resistance can also occur from alterations of the ribosomes such that they bind aminoglycosides less strongly or by less efficient uptake mechanisms. Because the aminoglycosides are polar in nature, they have to be injected. Aminoglycosides are also unable to cross the blood-brain barrier efficiently and so they cannot be used in the treatment of meningitis unless they are injected directly into the central nervous system. The activity of aminoglycosides is increased if they are administered with agents which disrupt cell wall synthesis as this increases uptake into the cell. However, bacteriostatic agents should not be taken with aminoglycosides because these inhibit the energy-dependent uptake process by which the aminoglycosides cross the cell membrane. Streptomycin was the first effective agent used against tuberculosis. However, resistance soon developed and a multidrug therapy involving streptomycin, isoniazid and para-aminosalicylic acid was used until the early 1970s. 
At that point, rifampicin became available allowing different multidrug therapies to be developed. Streptomycin is now rarely used for the treatment of tuberculosis unless there is a known resistance to isoniazid in which case it is administered by intramuscular injection. Streptomycin is still used to treat enterococcal endocarditis and as an adjunct to doxycycline in brucellosis. Gentamicin is administered by intramuscular or slow intravenous injection for the treatment of a number of infections including septicemia, neonatal sepsis, central nervous system infections including meningitis, biliary tract infections, acute pyelonephritis or prostitis, endocarditis and pneumonia in hospital patients. It can be used topically in drops for the treatment of eye and ear infections. This is the list of references followed for the lesson. That's all in this video, the classification, properties and clinical uses of aminoglycosides. In the next video, we will discuss the structure activity relationships and the mechanism of action of aminoglycosides. Till then, never stop learning and never stop watching my videos. Thank you for watching this video.